Hi, I'm Valen, and this is my Ooh. I don't know what to call it. It's well, most people call it a rant, so let's call it a rant about the hustings that happened in my constituency yesterday. Not that you'd know that there was a hustings at all. It wasn't advertised and looks like it was apparently only arranged on Wednesday. So the candidates are obviously running scared no matter what party they represent. Only three candidates turned up at all, one of which was the Tory candidate, but, and this is only my opinion, the short notice might well have been at her insistence, because with so few candidates to turn up, even she'd look good. But, a hustings isn't a proper hustings unless everyone is there. Everyone representing, the, uh, supposedly representing the constituency. So what was the point? Labour didn't turn up at all. And that means we don't know what she stands for. The only campaign literature I've had from the Labour Party was a leaflet shoved through the post uh, that I received this morning. And to be honest, I don't, I, I'm not going to read it. If she can't be bothered to come round knocking on the doors because if she, if she hasn't knocked on my door, that's for certain. So she doesn't really think she wants to earn my vote. She wouldn't have got it anyway, because Mr. Kid Starva is in charge of the party and I really don't believe anything that comes on any literature. The Labour, candid uh, Labour candidate says she's a disability rights campaigner, but from the rhetoric coming from Mr Kid Starver and the two people responsible, or who will be responsible for uh, benefits and the economy are both or are all saying that um, disability claimants aren't going to get any better treatment than under the Tories. So how she can actually stand for that party, even if she wanted to change something, Sir, uh, Mr. Kid Starver is not going to let her do it because what Starver says goes. And anyone who disagrees will get bollocked. So it's difficult to know who to vote for in my constituency. I wouldn't vote Tory, even if you paid me a billion pounds, I wouldn't vote Tory. I won't vote Lib Dem because the Lib Dems are still controlled by someone who was part of the Condem coalition that allowed the Tories to get away with constructive uh, 
manslaughter, let's put it, of poor, sick and disabled benefit claimants. So who were the other people who I could possibly vote for? Well, there's Labour, not going to support Mr Kid Starver at all. So there was the Workers' Party, the Greens, and there's an Independent. Can't remember how many uh, how many I've I've already said, but let's put it this way. Oh, sorry, and reform. That's the other one. I won't vote for reform, even though, and I hate to say this, I agree with some of the things that Nigel Farage has said about certain issues. Not about immigration, but about some of the things that they said the Tories have done that they will not do. So, sneaky, uh, uh, sneaky looking at your bank accounts if you're a, a benefit claimant. Because, and at least this is a step forward, Nigel Farage mentioned that includes pensioners. I'm glad someone has now finally... Let the cat out of the bag. The pensions are benefits too. And the largest part of the benefit bill is pensions. Not PIP. Not disability benefits. Not universal credit. Or anything like that. It's pensions. But of course, the Tories won't go after pensioners make cuts to pensions because pensioners are more likely to vote Tory. So what about the others? Well, the independent isn't going to have a chance. Workers' Party, I'm not sure. I, I agree with some of the stuff that their leader, George Galloway, says, but I don't agree with him on his social, uh, his social conservatism. He's too closed-minded. So. There's the Green, but then the Green Party candidate doesn't live in the area anyway. So I don't like voting for someone who doesn't live in the area that they're supposed to be representing. It's wrong. It smacks of parachuting in candidates where they shouldn't be. So it looks like, for me at least... I've got no one to vote for because they're either objectionable and I couldn't vote for them even to get the Tories out or they just don't have a hope in hell. The constituency I'm in will never vote Green because the Greens are a pro-EU party, want closer ties with the EU, and I'm in one of the most Brexit voting areas. I was a Remainer. I could see what was going to go wrong if we Brexited. I didn't buy into all the crap that the fear mongering that the economy would collapse the next day but I did know it would have a bad effect on us we were the poor the, the sick man of Europe before we joined the common market as it was then and we have become the or we will become the poor man of Europe now we're out of the EU 
the EU made us better. But that's a, an argument for another time. So for me, I went to all the trouble of getting the voter authorization certificate or whatever it's called uh, for the last set of uh, for the first set of elections that they insisted on uh, voter ID and I haven't used it it is gathering dust wherever I put it and it will not be used and I will not get to ask my questions of the candidates because the hustings has been and gone without a fanfare. What does that say about the electoral system that we operate under when a hustings should be organised? It doesn't. Ha it doesn't have to be. Uh, well ahead of the actual vote but it should be organised to be before the vote happens and with plenty of time for people to submit letters uh, uh, submit questions because the 2019 one was actually done through I think the local paper and they were asking you to submit questions. We didn't get that. No fanfare and looked like it was a hurriedly put together fiasco. So not all the candidates were there. Some of them may not even have known there was hustings going on. It was so hastily put together. What does that say about elect our electoral system? If that can be the case. There should be a law that says that hustings events have to be given two weeks notice and that questions should be allowed both on the floor and submitted beforehand if the people arranging it can do so. And if a hustings does not have all the candidates, then it should be considered null and void. Because judging by the what, what happened yesterday, the only person who would have looked good would have been the Tory candidate. And she has done nothing. For the local community unless it has progressed her image she has done nothing about the air pollution in our area which is one of the highest levels in the country and her voting record shows that she doesn't care about air pollution because she's voted against cleaning up the air on multiple occasions. So, I really don't know. I really don't know why anyone bothers anymore. Labour may think they'll snatch it because there's so much anger towards the Tories. I don't think so. I think the Tories will probably romp home again because they have fermented such a disgusting hatred towards doing anything good and productive and played on the fears and anxieties of the people here. The only possible candidate that 
might make a showing is reform because they are the Tories without the baggage that the Tories now have. And that's shocking because the Tories are authoritarian, corrupt, and everything that highlights the worst in humanity. And reform are them on steroids, but without the baggage. Unfortunately, Labour under Mr. Kid Starver is no better. He's offering nothing. He's offering crumbs off of the table. And given the way he has treated the party, with his Stalinist purges and hierarchy of racism and I can't actually think of the word. Apparent hatred of anyone who may be more popular than him, as in the case of the Labour candidate for Clacton, who, has, who had the temerity to have more retweets on something a photo or a video of him with Farage and he's been told not to go back to Clacton ever again don't set foot in Clacton don't do any more canvassing so basically opening the door for Farage just to walk into Parliament now and he ha has a disdain for the truth, does Mr. Kid Starver. He's lied about everything. He's watered down what was a pretty weak offer in the first place. And he's basically a wrinkle. Uh, 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 him and Sunak are wrinkles on the same rectum. This country is in a real problem. I'm not the sort of person who condones violence and I wouldn't call for it, but this country needs a revolution. And I'm afraid if the crop of politicians that we have in now and the candidates and all of that, the, the potentials and the ones who will get elected, if that is the standard we are getting then the only way there is going to be change will be a full-on, and I hate to say it, violent revolution. I really, honestly, sincerely believe that. But I have decided that I'm going to stand aside stand back from humanity. I still retain my human rights as long as we still retain them as a species because I am genetically human, but I have decided to stand apart from humanity and just watch the country burn because voting for any of these people is not worth it. They will, 
they will say that their hands are tied and that everything they promised can't be done now because of the same excuse the Tories used in 2010, the same excuse that Mr. Kid Starver is using now before he's even got into number 10. This general election should be the most important in our lifetimes. Actually, the same could have been said of 2017 and 2019. We lost the only chance we had of having a Prime Minister who would have put the country first. Not party, not themselves, the country, which is what they are supposed to be. I'm sorry if this is very upsetting, but that's how I see it. Locally, we have been denied the chance of questioning the candidates in my constituency because of a rushed and unheralded hustings and at the national level we have parties who may want to do something different but under the first past the post system realistically there is only Labour or Tory so we are looking at a Labour government I only hope that the independent challenger in Mr. Kid Starver's constituency manages to kick Starver out of his seat and his chance of becoming Prime Minister. But then he surrounded himself by people who think exactly like him. So even without Starver as the leader, the country's pretty fucked. Sorry to leave it on a downer, but there you go. That's politics in the UK for you. If you've managed to make it this far, I do hope if you've liked it or found it interesting, you'll share it. I am looking for subscribers. I make the pledge never to try and monetize this. I don't want to do this as a job. I just do these videos out of sheer boredom, to be honest. And if you want to see more hear more view of my views, then ding the notification bell and you can choose, I think I've always just done the everything, but I think you can choose what you, what you go for. So there you have it. What a world, what a country, what a fucking letdown.